All right, thank you everyone for calling in. This is the Anderson Township Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, as a reminder, if you're not uh, talking, please mute your phone or your uh, or your uh, computer. Um, in order to give public testimony, uh, please unmute yourself uh, when called upon by the Zoning Commission. So would you like to get started? I, I, I think so, it's 531, Jonathan, we'll turn it over. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 18th, 2020 meeting of the Anderson Township Zoning Commission. My name is Jonathan Gothard, and I serve as the chair to the Zoning Commission. Due to the to the declared state of emergency in the nation in Ohio and in the township, in the order of the, and the direct in the order of the director of the Ohio Department of Health issued March 12, 2020, in response to the COVID-19 emergency, this meeting is being convened electronically. The agenda for today's meeting is available on our website, www.andersontownship.org. Under the news section, you can click Anderson Township Zoning Commission to meet via teleconference May 18th. Then click click here to review case 2-2020 PUD. The board will accept comments by its phone or video during the public hearing for case 2020, Anderson. We ask that our participants mute their phones and only unmute as speaking. If you're going to speak, please state your name and address. It is also helpful to speak directly into your phone as opposed to using the speaker feature. At each of our board meetings, we encourage attendees to complete a sign-in sheet, including their name and address. If at some point during or after the meeting, if you would please electronically sign in, simply send an email to S Donovan, D-O-N-O-V-A-N, at andersontownship.org. Again, please sign in electronically by sending an email to S D O N O B A N at A N D E R S O N T O W N S H I P dot O R G. Before the meeting begins, I would like to identify the appointed zoning commissions that are participating in this meeting. Myself, Jonathan Gothard, Chairperson, Mr. J. Lewis, Vice Chair, Mr. Brian Elliff, Mr. Ben Henson, and Mr. Michael Dungies. Other personnel are joining in the meeting by telephone include Mr. Paul Drury, Director of Planning and Zoning, Ms. Sarah Donovan, Planner One. Each of us will do our best to remember to state our name before beginning to speak so that those joining us by phone or video can follow along. We thank you for joining us and appreciate your patience and understanding during these unprecedented times. So first, I'd like to see if there are any changes to the agenda, and if not, approval of the agenda as presented. So Mr. Lewis, any changes or? No changes. Thank you. Mr. Elliff. Hi, thank you. Mr. Hanson, do you have any changes to the agenda? No, I do not. Thank you. Mr. Dungies. I do not. That, uh, Ms. Donovan, if you could call roll for approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? Yes, I'm sorry, a motion to approve as submitted. Jay, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. This is Brian, I'll second. Uh, 
Donovan? Mr. Dungess? Here. Mr. Henson? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Gothard? Yes. So on the agenda is approval of minutes of the April 27th, 2020 Anderson Township Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, Mr. Henson, any comments or revisions? No, not that I saw. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eliff? Uh, the minutes look fine. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lewis? Uh, no changes that I noted. Okay. Mr. Dungies, you were not in attendance for that, so I will call your name. But if we could please have a, a motion to approve it the minutes as presented. This is Brian. I'll move to approve the April 27th, 2020 minutes. Thank you. Um, this is Jane. second. Ms. Donovan. Mr. Dungess. Abstain. Mr. Henson. Yes. Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Goth. Yes. So before we hear the first case, um, I'll outline the procedures the commission will follow in hearing and deciding this matter. Under the zoning re resolution, our decision is subject to appeal to the Board of Township Trustee Trustees and then to the Court of Common Pleas. As a result, we must employ different procedures from other cases that are typically presented to the Zoning Commission. Because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding, the commission will only receive ev evidence as to whether the application meets, meets or does not meet the standards and criteria of the zoning resolution. We do not want to hear opinion, just facts relating to compliance with these standards and criteria. As a result, all persons presenting testimony before the commission, whether for or against the applicant's position, may only do so after being sworn in. All witnesses will be subject to cross-examination. Staff will present a summary of the application. The applicant will then present its case. The commission members may ask questions of the staff and anyone who speaks on behalf of the applicant. If an attorney presents the case for the applicant, the attorney is not sworn in and is not considered to be a witness. As a result, the attorney's statements are not considered as evidence. Evidence only comes in through the witnesses who testify before the commission after being sworn in. Burden is on the applicant to present evidence that the application satisfies the standards and criteria for approval. After the applicant presents its case to its witnesses, all persons in the audience supporting the application will be permitted to testify one at a time. After being recognized by the chair, when all persons supporting the application are finished, those opposed to the application will be permitted to testify after being recognized by the chair. If anyone in opposition is represented by attorney, that party will go first, followed by any members of the audience. As stated previously, all persons wishing to testify whether for or against the application may only do so after being sworn in. When testifying, each person from the audience must state their name, address, and any affiliation to the case. Persons testifying will be limited to four minutes unless the commission member requests that they be given additional time. All testimony is to be directed to the commission only. No comments or questions are to be directed at the applicant or anyone else in the audience. The commission will only hear new, non repetitive evidence or questions. Should someone wish to show support of previous testimony, they may do so by following the testimony procedures and stating their support of previous testimony. Now, all persons who may give testimony this evening, please stand, raise your right hand, and swear or affirm. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you very much. Um, if staff could please present the re staff report for case 2-2020 PUD. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the applicant for case 2-2020 PUD is James Obert, 
of Hills Land and Development Corporation on behalf of Anderson Township Board of Trustees who, is, who are the property owners. The location is at 7832 Five Mile Road and the zoning there is E Retail. The request is to approve a multifamily development with 224 units, amenity area, multi-level parking garage with the one story of the garage serving as a metro parking ride and also shared parking with the Anderson Center uh, for overflow parking. So more details about the proposed um, development. The construction is to be a four-story multifamily residential building over a three-story parking garage. The three-story parking garage has um, been called the podium uh, for the multifamily building. So in addition to the four stories on top of the three-story garage, there will be a residential wrap on the top level of the uh, parking garage. So four stories of multifamily on top of the parking garage and then a wrap of residential on the parking garage level uh, facing Five Mile Road. Um, the lowest level of the garage will be 125 spaces. And again, this is for the Metro parking ride. This is to fulfill the contractual agreement with the township of the current parking ride. So the current parking ride will, will not be, dis, um, will not be uh, removed. It will be just relocated into the parking garage. There will be a waiting area in there as well to replace the current parking ride building. The, um, all three levels of the parking garage will have separate entrances. The, the lower level will be for the park and ride. It'll have its own entrance. The next two levels will have separate entrances for the residents of the apartments. The applicants proposing 224 units, um, a mixture of one and two bedroom apartments. Um, and then the two floors of the parking garage will consist of 400 spaces uh, solely for the residents. These will be private spaces solely for the residents. Uh, the ratio for the parking spaces equates to 1.79 parking spaces, and this falls within line of the township's zoning requirements between a single bedroom apartment um, requirement, which is at 1.5 parking spaces, and a two bedroom apartment is required to have two parking spaces. So the overall ratio is 1.79 spaces. There is a uh, driveway off of Town Center Way um, directly across from the Tri Health, um, the, the access road that goes between the Tri Health parking garage and their office building. This will be a surface, a small surface parking lot for uh, short term parking for guests of the um, apartments in a drop off area. So, next slide, please. The site history um, the township purchased. The Anderson Center property, this is where the Anderson Center is, uh, con was constructed as well as the park and ride uh, in conjunction with an agreement with the town center in exchange for the property for the detention basin for the, uh, the redevelopment of the Anderson Town Center. This all took place in 2003. The park and ride property was actually donated as part of this agreement. And then the park and ride building was constructed in 2004. Next slide, please. This is the overall site as it exists today, the parcel as it exists today, which is 5.2 acres or approximately 5.2 acres. The applicants are only purchasing 3.92 acres, so the actual site is, is slightly smaller than what's outlined in red. As you can see, the, uh, you can't see my mouse on the screen, I don't believe, sorry about that. The uh, Anderson Center is to the north, the Town Center is to the south, uh, in, in the slide itself in the photo, you can see the Tri-Health Medical Complex. Next slide, please. This is a zoning map for the site in question, which is e-retail. A portion of the Anderson Center is zoned retail. Uh, the back parking lot is zoned for single family. The Anderson Town Center is zoned EPUD. And um, the property immediately to the east, which is one Anderson Place, is also zoned EPUD. Across five mile to the west is on single family. Next slide, please. This is the existing features, the park and ride. You can see the topography as well as the existing parking lot and building Anderson Center to the north. Next slide, please. These are the site photos. So this is looking up the private drive that leads down to Anderson Center up to the parking ride, looking to the south. 
an existing uh, park and ride building. This is looking to the north, looking at Anderson Center, uh, which is the closest building. And then in the foreground is uh, the Mercy Healthplex. This is looking at the site where the apartments would be built. Um, this is the entrance into the parking lot. This would be a similar location of where the surface parking lot would be for the short term parking for the apartments. This is looking at the back side of the park and ride building. Um, generally looking in the west. Um, this would be the area uh, which you'll see on the site plan in a minute where the pool and one of the amenity areas would be for the apartments. This is looking north along Five Mile Road at the intersection with Town Center Way. And then this is looking um, due south from the site in question. This is looking at the parking garage for the Tri Health building, as well as the rear of the movie theater. So this is the proposed site plan. Um, the, 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 again, the podium would consist of three levels of parking garage. On top of that would be two buildings for multifamily use. Uh, there would be two amenity areas. One uh, pool would be in the vicinity of where the current park and ride building is now that would overlook Anderson Center. And then the other amenity area would be located in the courtyard of the, of the larger the two buildings. Next slide, please. This is the proposed grading plan. Um, the, the reason for the three levels of garage, it helps to uh, work with the topography in the area. There is a steep decrease in grade from Town Center Way uh, to the north. So the three levels of parking garage help serve as a retaining wall to Town Center Way and also helps to facilitate uh, better access into the parking garage from the private drive. All three entrances into the parking or to the parking garage would be off of the private drive uh, through an easement from Anderson Township. This is the landscaping plan, the interior plantings, as well as the perimeter plantings along Town Center Way and along Five Mile Road. Next slide. Um, this is the floor plan of level one. And when we say level one, this would be the first level for the residential units. We did not put all levels of the floor plan, although I believe they are on our website if anyone's interested in looking at those. But this is just to give you an idea of the mixture of unit types. They're all um, very different and, and made to uh, flow with the configuration of the building itself. The building is being constructed obviously to match the site, the triangular portion of the site and to work with the topography. So you can see the mix of units of uh, the different sizes, the corner units or the end units are a little bit larger, but there are definitely a mix of units, a uh, mix of sizes in the units. There's also an amenity area in the building itself, as well as in the courtyard and, and like I said, the other pool area. These are the elevations. Uh, the first elevation on the top is the west elevation. So this would be the elevation uh, if you're looking um, from five mile looking toward the east. So this, if you're on five mile road, you would be looking at the top elevation. The bottom uh, picture is the north elevation. This would be looking from the, uh, from Anderson Center, looking at that building, uh, looking toward the south. East elevation and the south elevation. The east elevation is as you're uh, looking at the building um, from Town Center Way. Well, not Town Center Way, the Anderson Center Drive. And then the south elevation, this is what the building is proposed uh, from Town Center Way as you're driving between the Tri Health buildings and uh, the new, new apartments. This is that elevation. As you can tell from the elevation drawings, there is proposed a mixture of building materials. Um, changes in the facade. It is a rather large structure, but they have, the applicant has made efforts um, to break up the facades on all of the, all sides, including the garage to help um, break that up as well. Next slide. This is the rendering at the corner of Five Mile and Town Center Way, generally looking south, southeast. 
Um, to the right of the slide is Town Center Way, where the cars are in the rendering. That would be Five Mile Road. This is a building section um, that explains the height. So zoning defines measuring height from the average grade. When measuring the average from the average grade of this structure uh, for zoning purposes, the height of the building is 60 feet. If you measure the building from Town Center Way, the highest point is 49 feet. Um, so there are two different measurements, um, but technically, by virtue of the zoning definition, the building is um, 60 feet tall. Next slide. So this application is being reviewed as a PUD because it is zoned retail and it exceeds 60% impervious surface. The uh, approximate impervious surface ratio of the site is just over 70%. So it is being reviewed as a plan unit development. With the plan unit development, we look at consistency with the zoning resolution, compliance with the zoning resolution, as well as consistency with adopted plans. So these four areas are um, items that the, the plan is not in compliance with the zoning resolution. Um, and when staff reviews PUD applications, we do call these out as variances, but as, as the zoning commission knows, um, this is part of a PUD review. So the, the four items that we wanted to bring to your attention was number one, the density. The density is 224 units on 3.92 acres, which is um, three, 762 square feet per unit where 3000 square feet of land area per unit is required. Uh, and that's 762 square feet of land area per unit. That is uh, how the density is calculated for multifamily. Number two, a front yard setback. The applicant's requesting zero feet on Town Center Way. This is to the right of way and 20 feet on Five Mile Road where 30 feet is required on all street frontages. Uh, number three, a rear yard setback of zero. This would be along the access drive uh, down to Anderson Center and this is where 35 feet is required. And number four, as we spoke about the height, the height is 60 feet from the average grade with 49 and 49 feet from Town Center Way, where the maximum of 45 or three stories is permitted. Next slide, please. In comparing uh, and reviewing the application and comparing them to our applicable plans, the first item is a comprehensive plan that we looked at, looked at its consistency with quality of life, land use and development. And I won't go through everything uh, on the slide, but you can see where staff felt that it was consistent with these two items. Next slide. Anderson Trails Plan. Um, so there are sidewalks along the private drive to Anderson Center. This connects into the five mile trail network, uh, as well as the Anderson Town Center network. And there is a sidewalk along Town Center Way. So the uh, development is tied into the Anderson Trails network. The Beachmont plan, while this development isn't specifically on Beachmont Avenue, Anderson Town Center falls within neighborhood three, which does highly encourage mixed use development, including multifamily, uh, mixed use being residential in addition to retail and office development. So while it isn't technically on Beachmont Avenue, it is an extension of the downtown area and this is a missing component of um, the downtown area and the town center. There's no currently no residential uh, in the downtown area. Um, one Anderson Place next door was approved, hasn't been constructed yet, but this would be an addition, a residential component to the area. It also incorporates a park and ride into this as a mixed use building. Next slide, please. Um, the other applicable plans are the township's design guidelines. So we look at site planning, outdoor spaces. There are outdoor spaces um, geared specifically for private use of the residents. However, um, the building itself is integrated into the town center as well as it complements the Anderson Center. Um, same way with internal traffic circulation, vehicular and pedestrian. The garage is designed to have two levels for private residents, but also the third level is for the park and ride and also shared parking um, for the Anderson Center. Facade design, we did talk about that already a little bit as a mixture of building materials, um, landscaping, lighting, and signage. The landscaping and lighting is compliance with uh, township zoning requirements and signage. While there were renderings submitted with the plans, a detailed signage plan has not been submitted. 
So recommendations, staff is of the opinion that um, with the PUD that it is consistent with the existing retail requirements. It is in the downtown area while the density is, um, it is dense. This is an area of the township that can support it on Five Mile Road and as immediate adjacent to the Anderson Town Center. Um, I feel it is consistent with the vision and goals of the trustees. Um, and I didn't really elaborate too much on the vision and goals of the trustees, but this site, um, the trustees felt like it was underdeveloped and it had potential to complement the downtown area that was, uh, it was initiated by a request for proposals to develop the site. And this consultant was, or this plan was one that was selected due to the residential component. The trustees felt like um, it was one of the best uses uh, for this site. It enables adequate protection of surrounding property and orderly development. Um, it is tied into the trails, um, surrounding trails, the transportation network is also connected to the Anderson Center as well as to the Anderson Town Center. Uh, it is served adequately and efficiently by public facilities and services. Uh, there are no scenic or historical sites. Um, we did talk about the sidewalks and the development would not be detrimental to surrounding uses. As far as the variances, staff is recommending approval. The variances, the one, I, I did want to talk about the density. The density uh, is higher than what is permitted in retail areas. However, the retail areas, specifically this one can support a higher density. As we stated before, it has adequate utilities. It has adequate um, infrastructure um, access to Five Mile Road, to the town center. Town center way now is connected to Wolf Angle out to Beachmont. Um, so this area could support higher density. Um, the front yard setbacks on Town Center Way, if you'll recall, the parking garage across the street was granted a variance of zero to Town Center Way. Um, the downtown plan calls for plans to, or calls for projects, buildings to be closer to the right of way in this area. It is to create that downtown feel um, that encourages the um, pedestrian encourages the downtown um, sense of, and a streetscape as, as you're along Town Center Way as well as into the Town Center. On Five Mile Road, they are requesting a 20-foot setback versus a 30-foot setback. Um, while the, the Tri-Health buildings are set back right at 30 feet, this um, is somewhat of a curve of Five Mile Road. In addition, there is a wider right-of-way um, through there, so we felt that um, 20 feet would be acceptable with the, the different variations of the building design as well as the topography. The height, um, staff feels that the height can also be supported in this area. There were variances, um, a variance approved for one Anderson Place, which is next door at a height of 85 feet. And then um, the movie theater was also granted a variance to height of 70 feet. So uh, this particular request is at 60 feet, so it's still lower than the movie theater uh, and the one Anderson place. So with that, I'll be able, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Drury. Mr. Lewis, any questions of staff? Um, sure. Uh, hey, Paul, when I reviewed the materials, it said there'd be a 24 to 48 month construction period. Where does, where, uh, what happens to the park and ride during the construction phase? So the township has been working with Metro during planning for this project, and we have looked at alternate locations. So. Currently, one of the offsite locations is on the town center property, um, just immediately due south uh, by the movie theater. If something changes there, the township is responsible for finding an alternate location for temporary location for the park and ride until the garage is constructed. Okay. And what about weather issues? Would it have to be a temporary structure to house riders? 
we have looked at temporary structures to house the riders, but what we are finding out is that most of the park and ride riders tend to wait in their vehicles before the bus even comes anyway. Uh, but yes, it is something that we are looking at. We we have looked at a temporary um, structure to be located there along Town Center Way. Okay. Um, I know the lot is currently used for overflow for events at the Anderson Center, be it weddings or the party in the plaza. Where do those folks go? So for overflow parking, the, the township, and I, I believe Steve Sievers or Vicki Earhart are speaking on behalf of the property owner tonight, but I can go ahead and speak to this. Um, the township is making plans to reduce the number of large events for the period of construction. Um, and then also we are looking to, uh, we have a contract with Mercy Health Flex to use their parking for overflow parking, as well as the same area that would be used for the park and ride. Okay. But other large events would probably be minimized during the time of construction, just not only for parking, just for the disruption of construction in general. Okay. With the um, the variance of the zero foot setback, what does that do? You said something about five mile has a curvature that comes down, but what about the line of sight? I was concerned um, a few years ago when we, when we put the theater in about uh, people leaving, which way they would go when the theater was originally pulled back a little bit from where it is now, people wanting to go out and go left on five mile. So what happens now? You said something about maybe a, a possible traffic study? Um, there, there will be a traffic study most likely that will be required and that may eventually warrant a signal at Town Center Way and Five Mile Road, um, especially with one Anderson Place opening as well. But there has, the warrant hasn't been there yet, so no signal. Um, a county decision? It is. It's a county decision. Um, regardless, though, the building is set back 20 feet from the right of way, and the right of way itself um, is in, I can measure to give you the accurate measurement, um, but it would provide enough setback of, for line of sight and it won't be an issue. Okay. I have some other uh, parking questions for the applicant, so I'll hold those. Um, with the capacity of the park and ride, with the passage of issue seven, does that change any of the, the numbers and projections? For the 125 spots? So we that is our agreement with the metro currently um, there is a plan b if more demand is created in the future um, for the township to provide additional spaces and that would be on township property most likely to the north of the current um or, or the park and ride in the lawn area of anderson center um, so that is part of the the township's contract with metro is if the demand is warranted um, but currently, before issue seven, even the demand was was down, and only about half of the spaces were being used in the parking lot. Okay, not sure that's a good thing. Um, the last thing, question had, had to do with the the um, uh, impervious. Where does the water? Where's the water going to go? Where's it going to be directed? This would go into the Anderson Center Lake. The lake was developed behind Anderson Center for uh, development of the town center as well as this property. This property, as you know, used to be the Thriftway grocery store a long time ago. We're in that general vicinity. There was no de detention for Anderson Town Center when it was the Beachmont Mall. The Anderson Center or the Anderson Lake was constructed as the detention basin for that development. But is there capacity issues? No. Is actually being dredged this summer, but that's just due to all the construction with Kroger, the town center sediment. Um, but there, that has been reviewed preliminarily, and I can let the applicant speak to that. Okay, thanks, Paul. No other questions. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Elif, any questions of staff? Uh, thanks, Mr. Gother. Just a couple, um, Paul. Uh, just can you refresh our memory? Uh, I know in this vicinity, we've had several cases, I think both BZA and Zoning Commission, where we've approved pretty high densities. Uh, I can think of three prior projects. Were those all on the area where the existing concrete pad is on the hillside, those prior projects? 
Yes, that, that was all for that project there. As, as you know, it's had different reiterations. Um, originally, it was proposed as apartments, and then the latest approval that went before the Zoning Commission was for senior living. So um, there were several different variances, but they were all for one Anderson place, which is the, the property next door to this. Okay. And um, I think, am I remembering correctly that the densities that were approved previously, they're on par with what we're looking at tonight, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they approximately. Were, yes. Um, the um, independent living in this uh, uh, memory care facility, one Anderson place, uh, is on par. It's slightly calculated differently because it's independent living. The units are a little smaller um, for senior living. But yes, they par with what is proposed. Okay, that that's helpful. And then I was just curious about sorta where are we where is sorta on this project uh this is going to be a park and ride used by them do they look at it and approve it or are they just worried about parking spaces what's our relationship what's the township's relationship with sorta on this project and with hills i guess the three partners on this so they've been heavily involved ever from ever since the beginning of planning for redevelopment of this site. And this is even before Hills was chosen as a developer through the RFP process. So because the property was constructed with federal dollars and, and I can let Steve explain this if he's gonna speak to Mr. Sievers. Um, they were heavily involved from the very beginning of the township requesting to even redevelop the site. Uh, once Hills was chosen as the developer, um, they have been working, the Township Hills and uh, Metro or sort of have been working hand in hand through the review process, also looking at offsite parking during construction, um, what their parking needs are currently, what they may be in the future. So they've been um, working with us hand in hand. Okay, thank you very much. That's all my question. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Mr. Henson, any questions of staff? I don't actually have any questions for your staff at this moment. No, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dungies, any questions of staff? Um, yeah, to follow up on the on Mr. Lewis's question about stormwater management, um, you said there was sufficient capacity in the lake. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, looking at the calculations that were provided, if that includes the if that's taking into account the rate at which the runoff will be um, will flow into that lake, um, the the three different frequency calculations that were provided, I mean, it looks like it's the the peak flow is going to increase twenty eight to thirty percent um, off that lot, which seems pretty substantial. I didn't know if there was any how, how deep the uh, stormwater management program was reviewed or to what level. Uh, I'll let the applicants speak to that. I think they would do a better job than I will. Uh, they can get the analysis for it. Okay. Um, and then my next question, and you may respond the same way, but um, I'll ask anyways. On the west elevation, I see some doors coming out of the, looks like the parking garage and some people standing there, but there's no sidewalk. Um, at least there doesn't appear to be a sidewalk. So is there some type of pedestrian access along the west side or? Are those just like egress exits for emergencies? Sarah, do you mind to go back to the site plan? Let's see if you go back to, uh, yeah. It is hard to tell. Currently, there's a sidewalk on the opposite side of um, the Anderson Center Way uh, on the lake side. There is a sidewalk. There's a crosswalk there at the overlook, and then it continues up the hill. So that is a good question for the applicant and something that we do need to accommodate to make sure that pedestrians um, have access or, or what the pedestrian plan is in that particular area. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. 
Thank you. With that, I have no questions of staff, but if the applicant would like to state their name, address, and affiliation to the case and present their case. Good evening. Uh, this is Jim Obert with Hills Properties. I'm Vice President of Planning, Zoning, and Development. And thank you very much for accommodating us in this uh, bit of a strange circumstance for dealing with the zoning application. Um, we have not specifically prepared a presentation uh, given the context of how this is being performed, we thought it would probably be better to uh, answer questions and respond to you that way on many of these items. And so I <clears throat> want to highlight a couple things with me here tonight are uh, Michael Koffer, he's uh, Vice President of our Land Acquisitions, and Brandon Gutman, who is uh, one of the principal owners of Hills Properties. So with that, uh, I did want to touch on a couple things. Um, before we get too much into the details. Uh, the one thing that I did want to reiterate is that we have had a lot of respect with uh, for, with Fort uh, Hampton Township, and we know that KZF has been one of their principal consultants probably for the last 20, 25 years in dealing with their planning documents. Uh, that is the very reason that we selected them as to be our partner on the design of this because if anybody's going to have a vested interest in making sure the execution of their prior plans goes as planned, it's going to be they. So uh, we spent a lot of time working with them, uh, several meetings with staff to review how to uh, best implement the intent of building uh, this community in, on the Anderson Town Center property, uh, to have it integrated with the community, to make it a walkable community, which is our one of our key aspects. I think that's what the township is looking for, is that uh, we've got a great resource at the Anderson Town Center now to support those businesses uh, with people who can walk to those. And so that's kind of the context that we looked at the design here. Um, the other principle, and this went through, started back in the days of the conception of this, is that there's a strain, uh, strong axis between uh, Anderson Center and the current uh, transportation center, transit center, and then back through the Anderson Town Center. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think you guys can see the mouse moving, um, but if you kind of visualize, you'll see the circular pattern of the sidewalk. And maybe Sarah, could you go to the, um, the second slide in the PowerPoint? Actually, that arrow photograph is perfect. So if you look at the Anderson Town Center, the upper right of this photograph, and you can see the walkway going across where the uh, water feature is up to the existing transit building. We have kept that same access, and then you can see that where the driveway comes down due south into the um, roadway that goes between the Tri Health Building and the garage. We have maintained that same visual access points through the design of this community. So we thought that was an important feature so that the orientation of everybody to the site remains virtually consistent with what's there today. Um, so we also went and we studied the architecture at the town center and identified some features on there. And if you look at, uh, you go to the Anderson Town Center, if you recollect, over many of the buildings, there's put it in kind of a simple nomenclature, hats on several of the buildings. If you uh, can look at some of the architectural elements of our proposed buildings, we're picking up some of those same thematic uh, planes on the roof to create visual interest on the architecture um, and tie it all in. Materials, again, are gonna be very similar. So we've tried to take that extra step to make sure that we're being consistent with what's been done in the community. Um, Michael, did you want to add anything at this point? And then I can get into answering maybe some of the questions that were raised by commission members. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, I just wanted to really, it just, um, we spent a lot of time working with KZF, making sure we got this transition right. This is a key property in the township because it's the transition from the town center to the Anderson Center. And that's why we have key 
access points lining up and key architectural features that match both. So it blends it all uh, together. Uh, so we worked really hard on that. We're really proud. We're looking forward to this being a um, real quality project that we think will be, uh, you know, it, it's one of those marquee things that will really be on the front page of our corporate um, cover when we're done with this. Our plan is to build it and basically um, we, we own these things forever. So that's a real difference between us and some of the other apartment developers is not only do we develop it up front, but we continue to own it, own it and manage it for the long run. Therefore, we tend to build these at a very high standard and really make these, you know, flagship properties at the township and that we will be proud of at the end of the day. Um, and I'm happy to also answer questions. I think Jim's going to take the lead first, specifically uh, some of the points that you were asking. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Mr. Do you want me to go ahead and start addressing some of the questions raised by the commission members? Uh, I was thinking we'll have the commission members present those questions again to you. I've got many of these written down, so I can go over them and hit those and then maybe fill in the gaps. That would be fine. Let's go ahead and do it that way. All right. Um, one of the first things we heard was uh, the whole issue of dealing with Metro SORTA and coordination. Uh, we have met with Khalid um, at Queen City Metro SORTA uh, several times, and uh, most recently, about two weeks ago, uh, Steve Sievers actually participated in that most recent meeting. That was uh, a ver it was a real meeting, but we uh, kept our social distancing. Um, but we wanted to have the opportunity to review with him the mechanics of how the structure works, uh, how the lower level um, access to the garage serves their, uh, their ridership, how the waiting area serves them, restrooms, and then how the queuing will occur for the buses that will uh, be serving the public from the, st the station. So uh, I can say we've uh, had some very good coordination. Steve might want to add to that if he's got anything else to share, but we've had some very good coordination with uh, Metro. And uh, in fact, Khalid is an architect and we've shared some more details of what we're visioning for uh, how the, uh, the entry canopy will work so that people can be standing um, in queuing to enter the buses. Uh, this is designed to stack two buses in front of the station, and then we've had continuing discussions on when and if they need to stack other buses, how that could occur. Uh, probably one of the big demand days is uh, Bengal football days. So any of those instances where they have additional need for ridership, we'll be able to deal with them. So uh, we, we believe we're well on the path to having a final approval from them based on what uh, we've done to date. Steve, if you had anything more to add to that or not? No, this is Steve Sievers with Anderson Township. Um, we've had several conversations with Metro, and I can provide some additional background later. But as it relates to this current project, uh, Jim, I think you all and the team at Hills have done a great job at working with them and, and trying to address the concerns that they have and, uh, and comfortable moving forward that you'll do that uh, when the questions arise. Thanks, Steve. Uh, let's jump over it again. Uh, as to the question on stormwater management detention, uh, we have submitted some preliminary numbers to Mohammed Islam, Hamilton County uh, Planning and Development. Uh, they will be doing the final reviews of this. Um, they are sorting through their final records, and so we don't have everything. Uh, the final construction drawings done complete, but the all indications are there is, as Paul alluded, there is adequate capacity to handle the stormwater drainage from this, from our site, proposed site, to uh, the existing drainage facilities. Um, if by any chance anything needs to uh, be modified, that certainly will be part of the final review with uh, planning and development as far as before we get a building construction permit. So we, we're, we're uh, all over it, so to speak, and uh, we'll be finalizing that as we do the final construction drawings. Um, the, Mr. Dungeons, I think the what I 
Saul and Sarah, if you could go to the perspective at uh, Five Mile and Town Center. And I, I didn't even pick up on this, and so you've got an eagle eye, Mr. Dungeons. Um, if you look closely at this perspective there, where the orange stripe is on the five mile, where the front car is, and then actually at the door, there's another doorway further to the north. They, there's actually a, is a shadow of people there. Those are emergency egress points. Um, probably didn't really need to have people shown there because people will never be really using those. Um, but for to illustrate that they are doorways, it does uh, help highlight those that uh, people will be coming out of there only during the emergency. Uh, while we're kind of talking about that, we have also met uh, several times with the Anderson Township Fire Department, reviewed the plans. Uh, we actually had uh, the assistant chief uh, out to one of our other communities and reviewed with him how we deal with fire protection within the buildings. Um, so he is on board. We've uh, subject to the final construction drawings for the buildings. Uh, we're all coordinated with him as to uh, access points for them to be able to serve an emergency situation within this structure. So those are the main questions that I picked up that I wrote down from uh, uh, comments from the commission members. So I'm happy to answer any other ones between myself and Michael and or Brandon. Great, thank you very much. Mr. Dungies, any questions? Uh, no, thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Elf? Uh, yeah, I, I just had uh, really one question for uh, for Jim, but uh, Michael or Brandon are on the call too, so they could, they could, um, of course, they're the leaders of the company, Hills. And my question is, um, we have seen, uh, I mentioned to Paul earlier on in the staff questions, uh, some kind of exciting developments that have come up. Uh, but uh, when we probably, when you get into the business part of it or the logistics, then we have seen that they actually have not happened, at least to date. And so, Jim, what's your feeling on this project uh, as far as hills? uh say uh, you get approved tonight um what are you guys thinking as far as getting out there and uh getting the earth moved and uh, seeing some some progress on on this really very large project i was just uh, curious where you guys were at with this obviously you've done a lot of uh, impressive design work what about from a business model I'll let Brandon and Michael chime in. Um, number one, we've uh, so far, I think we've invested three years of our life to this project from the day that uh, the concept was put out. Um, the RFP was talked about and getting to where we are today. Uh, we've done a lot of time, spent a lot of time and frankly money working with KZF. Uh, our other consultants, be it McGill Smith doing the civil, Schaefer doing the structural, uh, and Terracon, formerly known as HC Nutting, on the um, geotechnical. Uh, one of the things that we've been very um, cautious to make sure we deal with was understanding the site as it exists today. And there's uh, a, a lot of um, challenges on the site due to the existing fills that are there, retaining walls, and so on that. Uh, frankly, we spent a lot of time making sure we understood thoroughly uh, before we even started really uh, doing anything much more than a cartoon for footprint of a building. So we are heavily invested in the site and uh, we look forward to moving it forward so that again, uh, it is our goal and intention that this become a, a, an iconic structure and location in Anderson Township. And then when somebody says Vantage, uh, our goal is anybody in Cincinnati is going to know what Vantage is, where it is, that it's at the heart of Anderson Township. So, Brandon, Michael, you want to add anything to that? 
Yeah, I mean, it helps. This is the bread and butter of what we do are these high end residential developments. And we've been doing this for 60, 63 years now. And we really think this is a trophy property location. Even you can you can ask the, the township um, folks we've been dealing with, even in the middle of this coronavirus, we've not slowed down. We've kept going. This, this is this is a great site. This is the perfect product for this site. So, you know, we're bullish. We still have a few more things to get done with the uh, the township document wise. And our deal is specifically structured with the township that we're working as partners all the way through this approval process, all the way through the permit process. So everybody's going to know and agree exactly when the construction kickoff is. Um, so it's really a win win um design of this that we put together for the whole structure of the process and so uh you know we're here today corona uh, virus or not we're, we're going forward it's still a great project and a great location and uh we're still very positive on it so and, and, and also i live in the area and i'm by here uh several times a week i've got a lot of friends and they're going to hold me accountable so Awesome. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mr. Cother. That's that's the only question I had. Thank you for your answers. All right. Thank you, Mr. Henson. Any questions of the applicant? Yeah, and Paul. Maybe this comes back to you, but you mentioned that the uh, development does not include the strip of land to the north of the project. Is is there a reason for that? Is that land just too undevelopable because it's so narrow? Is there another set of plans for that? Uh, Chair, will you go back to the aerial, I guess? <clears throat> Are you referring to the area by, uh, by the township, the Anderson Center sign? Um, everything north of the cutoff line, that, yes. That, yeah. So that is being reserved for plan B for the park and ride for extra spaces should the demand warrant extra spaces for the park and ride. But yes, that is being retained by the township. It wasn't necessary for this development, um, and it, it will be it will be kept as is unless, again, um, the demand for the park and ride use uh, warrants additional spaces. This is Jim Obert. If I can add to that, uh, the township has been very. Um, they're trying to. Well, I want to make sure. That the visual integrity of the view lines to the Anderson Center have been maintained. So, as we've worked through the architecture on this and positioned the building on the site with view lines from five mile, they want to make sure that the uh, the essence of the Anderson Center and the visibility of the Anderson Center is maintained as a, uh, a landmark to people coming and going to up and down five mile road. So, part of the part of it is. There is some want that that uh, that impact to that area is does not block the view lines of Anderson Center. And sort of thinking along those same lines, Paul, you know, is there any potential as the township have considered turning this into open space? That what what I'm eventually getting to is is the same question um, that my fellow commissioner was asking along. Uh, five mile road is there is no connectivity over there for for I mean continuation of the five mile trail um, to wrap around the building and get you know bike riders and non drivers um, to the other side of this project without using the sidewalks or going through the project. It seems like an opportunity being missed. Well, current, and I, I'm not sure as I can't point to the slide, um, and I apologize for that. But currently, the trail goes up the hill along because of the steepness of the hill. It goes up. Yes, thank you, sir. Um, that's where the sidewalk currently goes. There is a sidewalk where um, the overlook is. It currently ends there. I did look at their site plan, and it is being tied into the garage. Um, on that side of, of the street. So I'm not sure we, uh, the plan is not to have pedestrians on five mile because it's a limited access highway. So the um, the five mile trail goes to the Mercy Healthplex property and then goes up 
uh, Anderson Center way into the town center. Right. So if I understood where you, which which area are you referencing? Well, I'm talking about the area in the 20 foot um, setback along five mile. Oh, okay. So no, we're not encouraging pedestrians in that area um, because of the limited access highway. Um, the pedestrians are encouraged to go up Anderson Center Way, and then there is a sidewalk and pedestrian connection into Anderson Town Center. There are no sidewalks in that vicinity, um, and we don't encourage pedestrians on Five Mile Road. Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of the way the trail um, behaves up near the library, where it is pretty close to Five Mile. Um, it's mm -hmm. rated and landscaped. It seems like we could do that here, but um, well, but we're not. I was I was just thinking of that empty space, that land that's just going to sit there. It you know could be a good connection that um, is kind of feels like a terminus at this point, considering the. I'm I'm struggling with you know honestly philosophically just the, the mixed use nature of this, but it it really butts into the medical offices rather than being tied directly into Anderson Town Center. Um, perhaps, you know, in an ideal world, the two properties would be flipped and that's not the reality, but trying to just uh, bridge the gap between, you know, humans and the environment a little bit more. So, so just to, um, just to tie into that, where you see the, the drive going into the park and ride off a of town center way. Right there. Um, so directly south, there are sidewalks on both sides of the road there that tie into the town center. There are sidewalks on both sides of five, or town center way where the pointer is now that, that travel along town center way. The township recently constructed a sidewalk on town center way to make that connection all the way over to Wolf Angle. And then there's a the sidewalk that comes up Anderson Center Drive which is this, that's your five mile trial connection. It currently goes through the Mercy Healthplex property. So I, I think there is that connection there. The area in front of, um, in that grassy area, um, like you said, pedestrians are not encouraged along five mile and, and that's not where the trail is. The trail is just off of five miles. So, I, you know, I think there is the pedestrian connection um, and the trail connection. Oh, you can look at the design element slide, and we have that kind of trail on the road, specifically when you were connected to the house. Chairman, I think my mic's going to get kind of broken out here. Any of that? Yeah, I'm not too sure who is speaking, but we did have some audio. This is Jim Obert. Let me try to clarify a little bit. From the Hills perspective, um, we address this pedestrian connection early on. And uh, the one component is at the intersection of Anderson Center Drive and Town Center Way, uh, we have proposed a landscape node there that will be kind of a collector point uh, of all the pedestrian circulation uh, from our community, from the town center, and then leading down to the Anderson Center down. Uh, that sidewalk system is part of the five mile trail. So we recognize that, um, again, it was our, our discussed early on that we really did not want to introduce pedestrians along the five mile frontage. The other thing that we've done is that we have made a pedestrian connection uh, from the um, park and ride site to the five mile trail down there or that access point so that if a, a rider wants to go to the Anderson Center or for the overflow parking feature of the Anderson Center, we will be able to get people from that overflow parking slash the Metro sort of parking area to that five mile trail system. So given the uh, logistics of what we have here, there's not a lot of space. And so we've tried to maximize the utility of what's there today, a uh, concurrent with um, implementing the plan that uh, we believe can work. And 
I, I think I see all the, the pedestrian connections. I was more talking about extending the trail and making this safe for people on bicycles. And it seems that um, this is just a really opportune or a great opportunity to um, fully build out this multimodal development. You've got the park and ride built right into it by definition. You've got the pedestrian connections with the sidewalks. Um, and we're just not closing the gap for the bikes. But moving on, that was, uh, I guess I think that was answered a few times. But going back to parking and the park and ride, I understand that the parking is intended to be on the lowest level of the garage. What kind of controls are going to be in place to make sure that residents and their guests of the building aren't going to squat on those places and squeeze the park and ride um, parkers out? I think your volume's off there, Jim. Sorry about that. Uh, we believe we have uh, adequate parking for our residents within the upper two floors. Uh, they will be served directly by elevator um, up to their residences. Those floors will be gated access of the garage so that only residents will be able to access the upper two levels of the garage. Um, I'm more worried are, about are the residential parking spaces free or do they have to rent those? In this instance, there, the price of it will be built into the rent because, because it is how it is. Right, so there uh, won't be an incentive to try to go to the lowest level and park down there. That is correct. The lowest level will be Public parking in the, in the in the broadest definition of that, it'll be um, the structure that we work with the township. We will build it, we will own it, and we're going to lease it to the township over some long term agreement. So it will be public par parking leased to Anderson Township and to Metro. So it'll be for their use. Um, it'll be for the use of anybody publicly, but there would be no incentive. Um, for me to rent an apartment and not be able to not pay for a parking spot because I can use the public parking down below. Uh, the, everybody will be paying for uh, the rent for their parking spot as part of the base residential lease deal. Great. Thank you, Jim. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Mr. Henson. Any questions of the applicant, Mr. Lewis? <clears throat> yeah, I guess one just came up when, when uh, Jim was talking about the um, part of it will be gated versus non-gated. How how will that work if you have a single or entrance if, if a person comes in and lives there versus someone who's park and ride? Well, number one, we'll have signage clear, clearly marked, and it'll be one of those things that'll be, um, it'll be learned behavior. Most part, I would say, uh, 99 and a half percent of your ridership of the park and ride will be doing it multiple times. So they're only gonna have to learn that lesson once. Um, but each of the entrances will be marked and for residents, there will be a transmitter uh, that will open the garage for them. So as they approach the garage, it'll open. Um, again, we'll, we will have signage and we'll coordinate signage with Metro and with the township because again, this is the township's overflow parking so that people understand the use of that lowest level of the garage um, for Anderson Center parking and uh, the Anderson Center Station transit station. But if it's if it's a transmitter, I understand how residents get in, but how do park and ride get in without a transmitter? How do they get through the gate? The, the park and ride level is not controlled. So that would be public access parking at all times. So is there something that stops someone from getting from the lowest level up to the other two levels? The other levels are not interconnected. Each level has its own access point. So there is no interconnection to the garage levels. Okay. And to the residents, so there's elevator access up to their apartment, but they don't have defined spots where they can park near to the nearest elevator to their apartment. It's first come first serve for residents. That is what we're looking at. We could do assigned parking. That decision has not been made finally. Um, but again, they will be on the upper two levels. 
Uh, the elevator from that lowest level will go up to the apartments because there's there's some uh, other functionality for waste removal and so on that um, may have to happen at that. And for move-ins, move-outs may use that, um, but it's um, there's no motivation for residents to use that lower level parking because there's adequate parking on the other levels. Okay, no other questions, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. I have a couple questions of the applicant. We see a lot of variety of materials on the exterior of the building. What are those materials planned to be? We will have uh, hardy panels, masonry units, um, i.e. brick. Uh, we haven't gone through the final selection on all the materials, but they'll all be durable. As Michael said, um, hills, we build these communities as legacy projects versus your commercial transit apartment builder, who they build it, lease it up, and they leave town. Um, so we look at these from the perspective of what is in the long-term interest of hills for the ownership. So we use all durable materials that we know we have a good success with maintaining and not having to replace. Uh, it goes from the exterior skin down to the countertops and cabinets inside the apartments. So it's a uh, very uh, thought out process. Obviously we're smart buyers and smart builders. We use uh, innovative products, but um, when we get to the final architectural plans, uh, there will be brick. Uh, some of the um, lower level of the garage, uh, it may have larger masonry units um, to fill in some areas. Garage will be poured in place concrete, um, but as you can see on the renderings, uh, we incorporate windows in that garage level so that it gives a finished appearance from uh, all sides of the building. Wherever you see garages, you're going to see windows, so it doesn't look like your standard uh, parking garage, uh, much like what you see across the street. I mean, Tri-Health did a nice job building their garage, or Hammer did, whoever built that, um, but it looks like a parking garage. We try not to highlight the fact that we have parking garages. Um, that's the very reason why we talk about, uh, Brian, uh, Paul talked about the residential wrap on the five mile side uh, on that top level of the garage is so that we could incorporate balconies and so on to bring that uh, residential character down closer to the street grade of five mile. So again, we, we have a vested interest in making sure that the materials we ultimately select are durable so that uh, not only does this look good, we know it's going to last and look that way for a long time. So right now you're not looking to use EFs or anything like that as far as a finish? We typically do not use EFs. Uh, we've done uh, many of our projects. We've used a hardy panel uh, that gives you a masonry slash concrete board that gives you the ability to cover large areas. Uh, it's got a much longer uh, durability, in our opinion, than an EFIS product, which over the course of time has had its challenges. They've kind of finally pretty much figured out that out of how to build it. But we would rather use our hardy panels and masonry units to create the skin so that we know uh, we know what we're buying and we know what we're going to own. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there going to be a stormwater maintenance? uh agreement between the township or is that part of the master detention of this detention area of anderson lake we believe that's part of the master uh anderson lake provision is serving the site is there going to be a, a maintenance agreement and easement for the anderson center way there will be yes we've already Initiated those conversations with the city administrator or the township administration. Uh, Ms. Donovan, if you could go to one of the site plans, please. Thank you. So along Anderson's center way, there's a few pull offs that are directly accessed from Anderson center way. One's near the pool area, and then one is down by the park and ride 
bus staging area. What are those pull-offs designed for? Well, those are those are the driveway accesses to the garage. But you can see. Um, but just to, to level. yeah, looking at the the access into the garage to the left of the pool. There's also a little pull off between the pool area and that and that parking garage access. Yeah, that area is for uh, two functions. It is for waste removal, and it is also where we can have um, the uh, move in move out function. There is room to pull a moving truck into there, so it is out of the way. Um, we typically would have a move in or move out once or twice a week um, when a community reaches its maturity. So we wanted to, we've got two areas staged so that one is there. So, and that will be paved as a patterned um, surface pavement so that looks more like a plaza area. And then there will be another move in, move out area uh, down in proximity of the uh, most Northern garage entry coming off the uh, driveway that serves the park and ride. So we've accommodated two move in, move out of areas. That's very important for us as we look at our communities to make sure that we don't disrupt uh, the flow of residents to and from their units, blocking the street and so on, uh, which commonly occurs in these more urban apartment communities. <laughs> So the, the one near the pool that has sufficient depth that during move in, move out, a truck would not be blocking, you know, uh, access on Anderson Center Way? That is correct. Typically, these move in, move outs are a 24 to 30 foot truck. So um, with that, we can get those trucks in there, keep them out of the pavement area, and uh, they can. Uh, serve the move in move out function without um, disrupting traffic. Okay. And then to the north of the parking ride and, and public space, there's the trash corral denoted. That is correct. Is that gonna be totally enclosed? It'll be screened off. Typically, um, typically what we'll have is we will have a trash compactor inside the building um that serves their trash chute through the building and then that will be a location where we will um, store the filled receptacles uh they will have rollout units that will have to roll out there and that's where they'll be uh, accumulated for pickup by the trash truck and they come and again uh we experience this um that may be pick up twice a week maybe pick up three times a week uh, probably twice a week is going to be adequate. Uh, so we just need room to store those rollouts so that they can be accessed by the garbage truck. So it'll all be screened off, uh, not visible at all from five mile road. It'll have uh, masonry walls around it from the five mile side. And then from the Anderson Center Drive side, it'll be gated. So for the sort of outside of that corral, it'll all have materials that would match the the main apartment building areas? That is correct. It will be painted CMU, it'll be a decorative CMU or, or a masonry yeah. unit? Yeah, it'll, it architecturally, it'll match the rest of the building. Okay. Uh, looking at, you know, the pedestrian traffic between this complex, the public park and ride in Anderson Center, is there plans to have uh, pedestrian marked pathways between over Anderson Center Way to the park or to the sidewalk that's opposite the drive? Yes, there is. Um, and it's kind of hard to see on the proposed features plan, but there is a sidewalk that we've proposed from uh, basically a, a walkway. And I, this plan may not be the most updated plan, um, but we did share that with staff. But coming from the of the park and ride, it'll cross the island that's between the park and ride drive and Anderson Center Way, and then the sidewalk will connect over to uh, the sidewalk on the east side of Anderson Center Way. 
So that connectivity will be there from a pedestrian standpoint, serving the ridership and or anybody, the overflow parking coming and going from the Anderson Center. All right, thank you very much. That's all the questions I have. So with that, is there anyone else that'd like to speak in favor of the application? Good evening, this is Steve Sievers with Anderson Township. Um, as the owner of the site or speaking on behalf of the owner, uh, and there were some questions that came up earlier. So there was an applicant or letter in our your packet on um, behalf of the township. So you have received that and reviewed it, which provides a little bit of background. Uh, that background doesn't really speak to the several years that preceded this. Uh, I was looking back at emails today and found emails from 2014 where we first approached uh, Federal Highway Administration, ODOT, Federal Transit Administration, Metro, and others. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a very complex um, project, especially for a community of our size and background. And the questions you all raised tonight were, were excellent and very helpful uh, and, and thorough. Um, there are other agreements that, that go into this, but I'll speak to just a couple of points of clarification or notes. Um, Mr. Drury spoke about the land to the north that land is reserved. Uh, we are reducing the park and ride spaces from 196 existing to 125 in the lowest level of the garage. Uh, with that, Metro, as part of their continual lease of the facility that was built by the township with Metro and uh, federal and state dollars, uh, has requested that they have a shadow parking area, so to speak, so that if and when the need would ever arise, uh, though the usage has gone down considerably over the years, if that need were to arise, we would look at other options, including existing parking on Anderson Center, the field that, that we refer to there out front are, are two of the areas that we've denoted to fulfill that purpose. So in um, all intents and purposes, that will remain that way as, as a an opportunity if we ever need it, uh, as well as that Vista to Anderson Center. As far as temporary park and ride locations, Mr. Drury spoke to the land that's uh, to the north and to the to the east and to the southeast of the uh, call it the Hemmer Garage or the Tri Health Garage. That is the area that we've been working with Victory Investments, owner of the Anderson Town Center, as an overflow or as a temporary park and ride location that would meet the needs and the demand of the current usage of the site, uh, much less than what's shown here, but but adequate for the for the foreseeable future. One of the benefits with construction, and certainly Hills can speak to this, is that as we've talked with Hamilton County. Uh, and as we've seen other projects that they've done, as the garage is finished, we begin to open up levels from the bottom up. So that bottom level is our overflow level, uh, is our park and ride level. It also um, is uniquely positioned in a much better location for overflow for Anderson Center events long term. So we're really thrilled about the accessibility uh, for that for our facility. As far as short term use of Anderson Center, Mr. Drury is correct. We're going to be reducing some of the events. However, one of the, um, the other aspects we have here is looking at daytime and weekend uh, parking options. So the park and ride is where we talked and it's an area that might be utilized for theater or restaurants in the evening. So our overflow in the evening actually is a tri-health garage. So we'd work both with Hemmer and tri-health to secure that for uh, basically evenings and weekend usage uh, in the interim of construction. So, so long as things continue, um, we're, we're moving down those roads with those entities. Uh, and again, our long term um, agreements with Metro will not only speak to that overflow parking, but operation of the um, park and ride facility, which would be continued. The township would maintain the waiting area. Uh, the rest of it would be part of the agreement that we have with Hills. So it's a ever evolving process, but um, we are we too are very excited to see this moving forward. We appreciate your consideration and again, your questions. And if there's any more on behalf of the township. Uh, myself or Vicki Earhart, our township administrators, also on this meeting. We'll do our best to try to address those. Thank you, Mr. Severs. Anyone else like to speak in favor of the application? Hey, Jonathan, it's Brian. I did have a quick question for Steve, if that would be okay. That would be great, Brian. And Hey, Steve, uh, so you've been working with sort of the most on this, and this is kind of a side issue with this, but this is going to be, a, I mean, Anderson already has, relatively speaking, when you look around the county, 
a tremendous park and ride facility and uh, sort of, uh, you know, for those who like to ride the bus, I used to, I remember when I moved here 26 years ago, I wanted to ride the bus downtown because I was used to it from where I came from. And they didn't have a, a what, what you need to have successful bus usage for places like out here in the suburbs where you've got a lot of professional workers going downtown is that end of day late bus. Because if you don't have that, not everybody has the good fortune to be able to get off when the bus is there. And I bumped into the guy that used to be the head of Sorta somewhere else. He's not there anymore. He, he left recently. And I posed that same question to him. I said, you know, the bus isn't practical because if you have to work late, you're, you're, you're going to miss the bus. We have Uber and Lyft, so that helps a little bit. But in all this negotiation, and if Anderson provides this probably the best park and ride facility I can imagine in this area, are, are we going to have some kind of a little bit of leverage with SORTA, especially with the new taxes and stuff that we're going to have for people who want to take the bus downtown, they're going to have that overflow possibility that if I have to work late on a Tuesday, I can still catch a late bus or, or, or is that, I know that's not really quite a zoning issue, but it's important and it would make this park and ride successful, especially for the people who are going to be living in this facility. They're going to, what a luxury they could take the bus and catch it, but they need to be able to get back home. What it, or what's been the conversation on something as simple as bus scheduling to make this facility a success in Anderson? That's it. Well, that's a great question. And, and other folks on this call, and Mr. Lewis, for example, was on our transportation advisory committee for a number of years. Um, it's kind of scary looking back at emails when we worked to build this facility back in the early 2000s. And, and here we are. Um, with the same people on our end working to tear it down and rebuild it um, just a few years later. But our community has always been committed to Metro um, Metro service, demanding Metro service, be it bus shelters or accessibility throughout our community, or as you indicated, Mr. L, this is kind of the showcase or the showpiece for Metro, and it has been. We're, we're looking forward to the 2.0 version of that. Um, but in the meantime, we have continually pushed for service operations um, to, to increase that really is when we built this, we had nearly 250 to 300 park and riders or more per day coming from Anderson going on their routes uh, with the reduction of routes with the decentralization of employment with increasing fares, whatever it may be. And we're now at a fraction of that. Uh, so we, we're hopeful that this will help to boost that again. Um, not to mention the fact that you've been able to park your car indoors all day, not to mention that. Uh, you know, the increased service has kind of been the primary focus for us is trying to get some of those extra routes back and increase the frequency, which has been shown to, to increase ridership. And Khalid uh, from Metro has spoken to that, the passage of issue seven. We certainly hope we'll, we'll do that. Uh, while the Crosstown route's helpful, we do see this as a destination park and ride point to point service. And it really provides that amenity where people from here and to the east can come to the spot, catch a bus and be downtown. Um, without stops in between. So that, that's going to be our focus um, once we get through the temporary construction. So we hope we have a little bit of a lull so we don't have to find as many parking spots. But once we're up and ready, um, we want to open the doors and, and be ready. And we'd love to have a parking problem in this as far as needing to expand. That's a really good sign. Um, and we're going to do our best to try to promote the opportunities here. So. Thank you. I guess like, right, right? I didn't see Bella, to your last point about the Metro has a guaranteed ride home program as well. And that's also been something that we've, you know, they, they've continued, which is for those instances where you miss the last bus to have a little more reassurance. Certainly Uber and Lyft help, but Metro has that program and has had that program as for a number of years for their, um, for their subscribers or their monthly pass holders. So we don't definitely see that continuing because it is a nice security for folks that, that use the, the transit service. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the applicant?
Seeing really no response to that. Is there anyone that would like to speak opposed to the application? Seeing no response to that, we will close the public hearing now and discuss amongst the commission members. So, Mr. Lewis. No, I've, uh, you know, I, I like the plan, uh, reviewed it. Obviously, I had some questions, and uh, for the most part, they were answered tonight. Um, I would concur, though, with uh, Commissioner Henson about um, this may be a unique opportunity to redesign that small portion of the, the five mile trail that goes down the hill uh, through Mercy and then across the street uh, at State. I do like the design of, I guess it'd be the west side of the trail that goes from the library down to uh, the club. It'd be nice for continuity, uh, design, uh, usefulness. If we could do something at this time with this section of the trail, rather than try and co-mingle the sidewalk with pedestrians and bikers to make it maybe wider and, and blacktop versus sidewalk. Again, it's maybe it's not uh, uh, salient to this exact zoning approval, but it'd be nice if we put some, if we had the opportunity, we could do something at this time. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Hopefully my mic was off when I went through that. <laughs> no, it was all on. We got it. Good. Thank you. Mr. Elif, comments? Yeah, uh, yes, just a few. Um, certainly, uh, when when we're talking about super high density, which this one is, this is the place for it, right? We've got the pedestrian connections. We've got the office retail. We've got the mass transit. So the density is good here. You want density so you have a successful project. And yeah, we've been waiting a while to get those people, the round the clock folks into the town center area. And this would provide that. Also, this design is what I've been hoping for. We've had some prior apartment complexes and sometimes I feel like somebody just dusted off the old 70s walk up plan that we see out in the suburbs of these older apartments. This is not that. This is modern looking. It's got really high end finishes. It's got tremendous amenities and it, it would be a huge, I believe, a huge asset for this. And also, um, so maybe I think if we keep looking at these projects, I know this isn't the exact same site, but I think maybe we're getting luckier here as, as we keep seeing these really nice projects come and I and I'm so hopeful that the economic conditions continue to uh, support this and and uh, uh, you know mr Kupfer wasn't joking i've seen a, a lot of hills developments in some communities and they hold on to them and that's really important it's not just something that sounds good at a zoning meeting that when the developer their thing is to build these and run them and operate them so we don't have to worry about or the worry is less that they be depreciated down and then sold to somebody else. Once this asset depreciates, we can expect over the years, this goes to the sustainability that this company is going to continue to reinvest to um, make it a really good uh, long-term quality apartment complex and um, so I think it's a really good fit here. And, and I really think the, the transit center is just kind of an extra bonus that kind of makes it all work. So it's pretty exciting, I think. And uh, I did also want to say it was really helpful to see the letter from Mr. Seavers laying out, uh, I think we all kind of sense this, but laying out why from the administration's level, uh, this is a really important project. It's helpful for us to know that. And um, uh, it's really good to see that, of course, we know Paul is supportive because of his report, but to see that from administration as well was quite helpful for me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Mr. Henson. 
No, I don't think I have too many discussion points left. Uh, I talked about the connectivity and the, the bike amenities. I, I do think that I read in the application that there will be bike locker storage in the building for residents of, as well, which just seems to play right into to tying this all together. And I do hope that that something happens with that north piece of land that's not a surface parking lot. I feel like that would be a real kind of tragedy to just put that in the middle of these two developments in between Anderson Center and, and this development uh, parking lot. Um, hopefully we can do better than that. But this development, to echo Brian's comments, is very exciting. Uh, I think this is going to be a feather in the cap for Anderson Township, and I hope that the generations that are going to live here uh, will agree with me and move in quickly and <laughs> lease up immediately. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Mr. Tungis. Uh, yeah, I think I'm in agreement um, in general with the other commissioners. My biggest concern with the stormwater management, as the applicant um, stated, will be addressed through the permitting process. So I'm sure that certain that'll be taken care of. Uh, I guess one one question I have, and maybe one of the commissioners can answer it or um, staff could, is if this were to be built in phases, I know they said 24 to 48 months, but if we're to be built in phases, um, construction were started and uh, for whatever reasons, economic or otherwise, um, not all of the phases were complete, what would the recourse from the township be? Would it just be a... Um, zoning violation or what kind of recourse would would occur if the whole thing wasn't completely built? Mr. Drury, maybe you can answer that. Well, I was hoping Steve Sievers was still on the line because there are some agreements in place between the developer and the township regarding this. I, this is Steve Sievers. I am still here and uh, Ms. Earhart's here and I'm going to put her on the spot uh, as to the exact details. but. Uh, that is part of our agreement as the seller of the property to the buyer. Uh, those assurances, and I won't speak to the exact terminology because I'll, I'll, I'll err, but there are assurances that we um, have not only to uh, address this site, but also to find other locations for the park and ride use so that we're not held in a situation that we've uh, taken an amenity away from the community. Uh, as for the zoning and the compliance types of things, I'll have to defer to Mr. Drury uh, on the construction project, but as to our assurances as the seller and representing the community, uh, those are in place with our development agreement with Hills Properties. Yes, as far as zoning goes, so we have had um, applications where the development has not been able to fulfill their plans and, and not construct them according to the Zoning Commission's approval. So in those situations, we have brought them back to the Zoning Commission for the potential of a revised plan or um, to discuss you know, the possibility of a longer phasing of that. But generally, um, you know, it's only happened in a couple of occasions, um, but we, they, those applications have come back before the Zoning Commission. Thanks, both of you. Mr. Dungies, any other questions or statements? Nope, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I also would like to agree with the other commissioners. You know, this is a very nice development for the township uh, to bring life, a new marketing and housing option to the township in the heart of the township. So it's a very exciting opportunity for everybody involved. I want to thank everybody for it sounds like the years and years of investment of time to realize a plan that's very viable. So with that, uh, would a commission member like to make a motion? Please. Okay, for lack of, uh, of someone else. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> I would move that we approve um, case number 2 2020 PUD for the property located at 7832 Five Mile Road, 500, page 202, parcel 2, um, as presented uh, in accordance with the uh, also the approval of the four variances listed by staff. And I won't go through those, um, but.
but I think we all talk through them and we're okay with those four variances about setbacks and the square footage and the height. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Do we have a second? Uh, this is Mr. Dangerous, I'll second. Thank you. Ms. Donovan, can you call roll, please? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Mr. Dungeons? Yes. Mr. Henson? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Gothard? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Drury, anything forecasted for next month's meeting? Before we all depart, if I could, I would like to thank the commission and the staff of Anderson Township my half of Hills, we're very excited about moving this forward. And so we appreciate uh, under these different circumstances, being able to uh, push this forward so we can move on to the next steps. So again, we're always available for anybody who has any questions. And if uh, anybody would like to see one of our finished projects, uh, 4,900 is not far from right in downtown Blue Ash, similar circumstance. So if anybody would like to see that, just reach out to either myself or Michael Coffer, and we'll be glad to give a tour. Thank you. Uh, yes, so our next meeting is scheduled for June the 22nd. We do have uh, one application that has been submitted, and we there could be the potential of another application, so we may have two. So if you could please mark your calendars for June 22nd. And, um, We'll go from there. We're not sure yet if we will still be meeting um, virtually. We will keep you posted. All right. Thank you, Mr. Drury. With that, uh, someone like to make a motion of adjournment. This is Brian. I'll move to adjourn. A second, please. This is Ben. I'll second. Thank you. I'll uh, all in favor, I'll say aye. 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 Opposed? With that, I thank you very much for all your time and your computer usage tonight. So have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.